Hey everybody, I'm Russo, and I do a little work here and there. You are watching Rack and Tear Weekly, and here I am again, showing that my weeks do in fact start on Mondays. So today I just have a couple of items to show, the first of which is here, a prototype for, well, I, I guess you'd call them spaceship floors. This is the top of a 2x2 two two tile, and each of those squares is an inch and a quarter. The detail that you see here is just the top five layers, and that's two layers of the frame and three layers of the holes for the grating. So yeah, I, I think it looks pretty good, but it will definitely look better once I get some paint on it. And at this point, for anyone that doesn't watch or hasn't watched, I suppose, my older videos on tiles like this, I will say these layers are cardstock, 110 pound cardstock from Georgia Pacific. That doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess the weight does because that affects the thickness of the cardstock. And by my estimation, this particular cardstock is something like a quarter of a millimeter thick. It's a little more than that, maybe 0.27 millimeters or 0 0.0108 inches give or take, always give or take. And this isn't done as it still needs about 35 layers added on the bottom. I say about 35 layers added to the bottom. It needs exactly 35 layers added to the bottom and that'll make it the thickness that I would like. You see right now it can bend ever so slightly and that would make the layers come apart. This hasn't been sealed in any way, but eventually it will be. I just have to add the bottom one. I just wanted to show it off because I think it's neat. So there is one issue that this has and it's not much of an issue, especially Especially with square tiles like this, one by one, two by two, three by three, etc., etc. But if you had something like cover up the right hand side and say it's a one by two, then you would have to make two different versions uh, just because of the offset holes. The pattern wouldn't look right if you were to rotate it and have it next to one that was 90 degrees off. You can rotate it 180 degrees, that's fine. And really everything's lined up. It's just, if you look at these little indentations, you can see that there are five holes lined up at the top and the bottom. And there's still five holes in that same area on the sides, but they are not lined up. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Also, this is sort of a project that was born for mold making. Uh, doing just one of these takes a little bit of time, especially if you're going to cut it out by hand. Because you can see there's a lot of holes there, and you got to cut all those holes out on three layers. So this 2x2 two two tile has something like, I don't know, a thousand holes total that you have to cut out. It's a whole deal. But yeah, that is what it is, and uh, we'll set that to the side. I'll put Samus Aaron on there, just because. And we'll talk about the other little project I've been working on this past week. This is what I'm considering a 1 to 285 scale R-Wing from Star Fox. Here's Star Fox. In case you hadn't seen it before, this is Star Fox. But uh, yeah, this guy isn't actually stuck on the base. This is a little bit of metal that I turned some filigree on the end, and a little magnetic base that I made earlier. And, hey, you wouldn't think that it would, but it does stand up without being magnetized to something. I don't know if that's how you say that. Yeah, magnetized to something, we'll call it. And this isn't perfect, but it's pretty good. It's pretty close. It's sort of the Nintendo 64 version. And while the body is sliced like anything else, like that tile there in the background, the wings are sort of what you consider standard paper craft. It's just two layers of cardstock glued together. It was just easier to do that way, since the sliced out wings were really just little triangles and therefore very difficult to line up. So the main concern here is where I say that I consider it 1 to 285 scale, and I'll bring in one of the X-Wing miniatures here. Since they are supposed to be 1 to 285 scale, and you'll see what I mean, the X-Wing is quite a bit larger than the R-Wing, and there are a whole bunch of concerns here. I'm not going to get into all of them. Basically, the only official measurement of the R-Wing is at 28 space meters long, and we don't know what a space meter is. We also know that Fox McCloud claims to be something like five foot nine but I don't entirely buy that especially with a 28 meter long ship that's a really big ship for reference this x-wing is uh, I don't know off the top of my head 15 meters long so you know if we accept that then I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the R-Wing can be a lot smaller because most of its maneuverability lies in the G diffuser system. Plus the only people that fly these things are animals and I'm pretty sure they've overestimated their height. By how much? I don't know, factor of four? I think they're probably the size of animals or you know, large animals perhaps, but animals nonetheless. So future improvements to this before I make an entire video dedicated to it. 
Uh, I think the wings need to move. Right now it's sort of stuck in all range mode. And also those G diffusers need to move. Like if we bring the original box back in, you can see that those features are attached separately. And while the G diffusers in Star Fox 64, and even in the original Star Fox, this one, don't move, I think that they should. I mean, realistically, these things can hover, or at least they do in the new game. And, you know, all the parts move in the new game, so. I could definitely make one in 28 millimeter scale and have all that motion, and I might do that first, but eventually the idea is to bring it down to this scale because, you know, large scale space battles are going to be difficult at most scales larger than this one. Anyway, that's going to be it for me for today. I'm kind of cutting it close as it is. So until next time, you've been watching Rack and Tear Weekly on Russo Works, and I'm Rousseau. Out. <laughs>